Recording? Cool, it's recording. We can just I'm ready. It's in a place. Mind you, it is already recording. Okay. Uh, and I do that because I like B-roll content. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I say this in almost every single conversation because it's just fun that way. You still yeah. got the socks on? I got the socks on, yeah. You never know when you're going to need a shot. <laughs> so. You see that? Spokesperson yeah, already. I'm, I'm ready. Perfect. Well, for everyone just tuning in, um, I'm sitting with someone special today. Uh, you may know him as number 44, the the defender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh. Uh, and if not that, you may know him as Tessa Virtue's uh, fiance, uh, partner to be. Uh, and then from there, I honestly, as much as I, I enjoy sports, I'm not the biggest sports fan. Mm -hmm. Crazy, because I'm not, like the Peace Collective guy. But whenever I hear Morgan Riley, the only thing I think of is Morgan and Morgan. So like the, the law firm or the insurance. Or law firm, yeah. And so my brother watches like always like a big Leafs fan. And every time I hear Morgan Riley, I'm like, isn't that, does he own like a law firm <laughs> or an insurance company? <laughs> With that being said, Morgan Riley, everyone. Morgan Riley. Thank you for having me. I don't, uh, I'm not in on the law firm, uh, <laughs> but. Let's not rule it out. I'd like to make look. Side plan. quests are great. Also, with yeah. the world, the way the world's going, uh, we need to be able to have backup plans and For have sure. pivot points to Always start ready, different yeah. careers. One hundred percent. Well, with that being said, the the biggest reason why we're here today is one. <clears throat> I was told from a little birdie that you are a big supporter of Peace Collective, which mm. we love. Yeah. So, no, this was no handout thing. This was none of that. Like Morgan comes through, picks up some garments, and yeah. supports the brand. Yeah. But the main reason we're here today is because we just did a collection with you. Yeah, yeah, I feel very lucky um, to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been down with Peace Collective for a while now. I've lived in Toronto for um, you know, more than 10 years. And mm -hmm. you guys are kind of ingrained in, in what's going on around here. I lived, uh, I lived on Queen West and I, I, was re I really loved that kind of neighborhood. And yeah. um, you know, there's tons of your stuff kind of cruising around on the streets and yeah. I, you know, I started to notice it. And then um, I think what you guys kind of stand for and how you guys roll um, is cool. And I think when the opportunity, because I, I, had been, I had been wearing your stuff and whatnot. And then when this opportunity came about, uh, I, I was, I was uh, extremely lucky and very excited. And we were <clears throat> just as excited to hear that you were you want to jump on board to get yeah. this done. Uh, talk to me more about the process and more so like the inspiration behind even saying yes, like let's mm. do this. Where yeah. that all stemmed from? Like yeah. we have the collection where it's like mo love. Yeah. In my head, I'm like mo money, mo problems, but that's not yeah, the case. I know, I know. Bad boy, let's not go yeah. there. But yeah. Yeah, I think you know. I think the answer when the question was brought to me was easy. That I, I, I it was an easy yes that I wanted to do. Uh, or I wanted to kind of be involved and I, I've always been like aligned with you know what you guys are about and, cool. but it was definitely challenging in terms of I, I don't know like I'm not a fashion designer uh, I'm not no an owner of an insurance or law firm company or anything figure like that. that out today so when I was kind of processing what I would want to put on a shirt or mm -hmm. you know I didn't I, I just wanted to kind of keep it aligned with what you guys already have built and you know for me I think it was just about um, acceptance yeah. um, of yourself, of the people around you, of your, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, I think we all need, want more of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that kind of is aligned with the brand and whatnot. And yeah. so we kind of just kind of, we got rolling with that. The Mo Love, uh, Mo Kindness. Actually on Queen or Dundas, there was that painting on a, on a, on a brick building of the, of the guy that had Mo Love tattooed on his, on his belly. He used to walk by it all the time. Anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a side tangent, but anyway. If someone finds that, <clears throat> or even has a picture of it, please Mo, send it to us, yeah. DM it to us. Um, yeah, Mo Life, maybe it said, I can't remember, but yeah. I used to walk by it all the time. And, and, and so I wasn't as keen on that one because it was strange to put your name on something. Yeah. And so I wasn't entirely comfortable with that at the start, but um, it was kind of a cool process. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what we did here today. And um, you know, I couldn't be happier that, uh, uh, to be involved with, um, with Peace Collective. Thank you. We love that. Yeah, that's a great answer, actually. Oh, uh, I, I I was kind of listening to what you said. Like, I didn't want to I didn't want to rehearse or, or or anything. I just wanted to be honest. So cool. Well, with that being said, I know you mentioned that you've been in Toronto for about ten years now. Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong. You are a Vancouver native. Yeah. Um, yep. What was the jump? Was it making it to the big leagues and then moving out here? What was the steps behind that? And then we'll obviously get into other things yeah. later because as this podcast or this conversation goes, we're very big on mental health, mm -hmm. right? So actually, let's let's run it back. So starting in Vancouver, yep. your life starts there. 
What was your childhood like when it mm. came to the conversation about mental health or even um, managing your emotions? Because you're a younger brother? I'm a younger brother. You're a younger yeah, brother? I got an older brother by four years. And what was that relationship like? It was good. I, I was, you know, I mean, we were tight. Um, we played sports growing up and, you know, we spent a lot of time with each other. And, um, you know, with our, with him and uh, my parents, I, I was always extremely fortunate. We had lots of conversations. We always kind of ate meals together and we talked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel very lucky for that now uh, because I, I think I realize the importance of that. Yeah. Um, I don't think we ever really addressed specifically mental health. Yeah. Um, but it was, I always had a place or a person, you know, whether it was my brother Connor or, or or my dad, Andy, who's in Toronto right now, we're having dinner tonight. Shout out to Andy. Um, Shout out to Pops. I, I was always pretty comfortable, you know, speaking my mind and mm -hmm. just being honest. And um, again, in in real time, I don't think I understood the value of that. Yeah. Um, but I do now, and I think that uh, I think it's important, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So, a big thing that uh, we always did, like we always had meals together like we always had dinner together like I wasn't yeah. really allowed or I was allowed but I didn't I didn't like go out for dinner or go yeah. over to like a friend's house all that often yeah. like it was kind of always the four of us we were I, I, I mean again in real time I think it was probably annoying because at that point in your life you want to go out or even play sports or you want to go hang out with your friends or whatever but now it, you know I look back on it, I think that's pretty cool yeah and so we would always do dinner the four of us and you know that was kind of our chance to talk and um about your day, about, you know, whatever you're going through, yeah. you know, whether it's sports or girls or, you know, whatever's going on in your life at that point. So I felt like I always had a, a place to, to, you know, be myself. And again, I don't think I understood the value of that at the time, but I certainly do now. Perfect. And I love it because, again, growing up here for at least me, mm. again, also being a younger brother, it was... I was able to talk to my brother. Now, we have a big age gap from, mm -hmm. unlike you and your brother, it's yeah. 15 years between oh, the two wow. of us. So I always had like a second parent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and on top, of, on top of that, having immigrant fam like an immigrant family, mm -hmm. right? They were all born in the Philippines. I was the only one born here. Oh, wow. But my brother coming here at a young age with them, he had to learn the North American culture and mm -hmm. learn how to speak, did everything for them. And then on the flip side, pretty much had to raise me. Mm -hmm. So the conversation never really was about mental health or emotions. And for him, right, because growing up around that time, it was very much so, I guess, like how any parent back then was where it's, you know, you work through your stuff. Yeah. Right. You don't really, we don't address it. We're not like, right. my emotions are this or my mental health is this. It was oh, I'm sad or upset or whatever it is, we find out the reason and we try to go fix that. Right. If it's, oh, I'm stressed about money, well, we get up and we go to work, Yeah. right? Yeah. We yeah. just grind through it, Yeah. which is dope. Uh, yeah. Before we even jump into anything else, I wonder who's Shirley? Uh, that's my mom, and my mom is Shirley. And there's, I was on your Instagram the other day and I saw yeah. you, you have this thing with Mercedes-Benz New Market yeah. uh, and you give back to South Lake is the name of the hospital. Yes. And, uh, and I've been partnering with um, the dealership in Newmarket for a couple of years now, and it's based around the opportunity to give back to South Lake Foundation. And that always, you know, I think when those opportunities present themselves, it's easier for me, and I feel more comfortable doing it when I know that there's an opportunity to give back. Yeah. Is there a correlation between what your mother does yeah. and to that? Can you talk to me about that? There's not. Mm. There's not. I, well, maybe there is an underlying correlation. Um, but, uh, I mean, my mom is an important person in my life. Um, and I think that she kind of always had a, a point to make where if you have an opportunity to, to do something or, or do good, that it's important that the, the doing good part is, is more important. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to keep that in mind. And... You, you know, having played hockey here in Toronto, you're presented with opportunities, you know, much like this one. And um, I, I've always kind of wanted there to be a, an opportunity, not just to, you know, do good for yourself or do something for yourself, but to incorporate other people and, you, you know, try to give back in the process. Love it. So riddle me this. Okay. Um, what was that train of thought? Okay. So obviously uh, your partner to be. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know who that is, Tessa, Tessa Virtue. Mm -hmm. um, 
Olympic, is it skate dancing? Ice dancing. Ice dancing, yeah. and you being uh, Morgan Riley, uh, number 44 for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yep. Who's better on the ice? Um, she is, for sure. Um, we've only been on the ice together a, a handful of times, mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's a big difference in what happens when we're out there together. She's much more graceful um, <laughs> and quiet and you know, elegant, and I'm uh, a bit louder, a bit you know, more rough around the edges, I think. No worries, we see that. Yeah, we no, see I, that. I know, I'm not breaking any news, I suppose. <laughs> but um, yeah, during uh, quarantine, we were in Vancouver and we had a chance uh, to go on the ice together, yeah. kind of at the end of it. Um, and so it was just the two of us and she uh, only wanted to play hockey. So she was, oh, so she was like wearing like my equipment and yeah. like shooting pucks and stuff. And I, I wanted to try the ice dancing part of it. So we kind of took turns going back and forth. And um, is there footage anywhere that we could possibly uh, link to I've this? I've got I've got some pictures on my phone of her like in my equipment that are pretty funny, but um, I've kind of I'm not gonna I don't I don't think I'll be releasing those. I was gonna say there's no yeah, promises yeah, for, yeah. for footage being put out there, but yeah. the fact that it's out there, yeah, we could all imagine what that kind of yeah. is. Yeah, it exists, and um, it was kind of funny the way that we both wanted to do the other person sport um, I think it's just kind of you know that opportunity to try something new I love that I love yeah. that you guys can share that together yeah for sure right especially on the ice yeah on both professional backgrounds of it yeah going back into the whole mental health has uh, mental health aspect of things mm -hmm. being in the NHL so we know that most major leagues offer physical therapy mm -hmm. things to make sure your body is good is there anything in place whether it's resources whether it's um, even just like recommendations of who you could talk to when yep. it comes down to your mental health yeah, yeah. I remember going through the process when I got drafted by Toronto in 2012. The team had um, had a mental coach um, at the time who was kind of both kind of, uh, you know, not a therapist, but she was a performance coach, okay. mental coach, a sports psychologist. And, you know, that's kind of who you went to to talk about your performances yeah. if, if you wanted to. And you know, at that time, that was kind of the main focus of it. It was it, it, it was based off hockey mm -hmm. and your performance and how are you feeling? How how can like what do you need to do to get better? And I think over the years, it's changed um, to being more of a conversation, not just about hockey and performance and, and output and work. It's more about life and you know how are you really? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's good. And I think I think the other thing that I've learned and I think is cool that. Um, I feel is true, at least for our hockey team, is that, you know, once you play with some teammates for um, a few years, you become more comfortable, you know, not having to book time off mm -hmm. to really talk about those things. You yeah, kind of yeah. just do it on the plane or you kind of realize one of your friends is, is, is down and you get to talk and, you know, that takes time to kind of... Um, you know, create that relationship, but um, I do think that's important as well. It really does become an extended family. For sure, Outside yeah. of the one that you were born into. Yeah. With that being said, is there a person on the team uh, that you would actively reach out to or uh, just speak to if you yeah. had some shit going on? For sure. I, I mean, I think plenty of guys um, I, I would feel comfortable doing that with. And um, I think, you know, depending on you know, what topic that was, it, it yeah. changes because we got, I mean, people from all over, people with different backgrounds, you know, you create different, you know, kind of, uh, um, like you know, relationships. Tightening. Yeah, with, yeah. With, with different people. And I think that like Mitch Marner, for example, is a guy who like, he couldn't hide his emotions if mm. he like tried, like if, <laughs> yeah. he, if his life depended on it. And like, that's like, a, that's an amazing quality. And yeah. like, like we love, so he's an easy guy to kind of know where he's at. And so, you know, that's his strength, I think. And, uh, and so, I mean, you can talk to him about anything or, yeah. or, or TJ Brody's my D partner. And I mean, we talk about all types of stuff. So it just really depends on what's going on. But, you know, I, I, I certainly feel comfortable uh, um, having those conversations and I, I hope other people do with me too. Perfect, love it. Now, as we slowly wind this down, I do, I do typically play, not, I wouldn't call it a game, but we do this exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, I do this exercise with my guests called uh, word association or feeling association. Okay. So what I'm going to have uh, is Mark, who's technically behind the camera. Okay. Uh, he's going to flip over the laptop. He's going to show you a couple pictures in the slide. Okay. And I want you to associate a feeling and or emotion okay. to the picture. And on top of that, 
if you can't possibly describe it, like okay. the why behind it. A feeling and emotion and, 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 okay. and why you feel it. Exactly. Got it. You ready? I'm ready. Cool. So that is the, uh, our donation uh, with Mercedes-Benz New Market to South Lake. And uh, that emotion or feeling, I, you know, I, I don't want to say pride because that mm -hmm. makes it, that's, that's not accurate. I think that's just um, an example of, of, of being around good people. Yeah. Um, the person on the right is, is Brian Fulton. He's in charge up there and he is huge on this and he's huge around Christmas time. We do a, 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 a toy drive with the York Regional Police, uh, which is kind of coming up. And I think that's just, you know, giving back is what, you know, that makes me think of, I suppose. Love it. Um, and I guess the emotion is just, I, I think that's just what you're kind of supposed to do at certain points. Yep. And, um, so that's a lot of fun. We've had a chance to do that for a couple of years now and we'll do the toy drive in December and um, hopefully do it again next year. Love it. Mark, next. Long answer, sorry about that. No, hey, I would rather you speak about it, and I love it because- I'll, I'll tighten it up. Sometimes it isn't, it isn't as easy. Yeah, yeah, so that is a family picture, plus my grandma Lo, uh, who is my dad's mom. Mm -hmm. That was the first house that we lived in, the house that I kind of grew up in on Cranley Drive in Vancouver. Um, that makes me feel uh, fortunate, mm -hmm. lucky, um, and uh, I, I have this picture on my phone, so I, I cross over it probably more than you'd think. But uh, yeah, that's in the backyard somewhere. That makes me think of just, I mean, being a kid and not having any concerns and just kind of, um, you know, trying to look up to my older brother. But yeah. yeah, certainly when I look at that, I feel very fortunate, very lucky to, to have um, a close family and, you know, two supportive parents. And then obviously Grandma Lowe is there, uh, you know, doing her thing. She's probably playing goalie for us when we're <laughs> playing hockey or something. First experience of a goalie. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Next. Uh, the boys. That's, um, that's our crew. Um, I've had a chance to play with Austin and Mitch now. Uh, I think this is their eighth year, so, um, you know, they're amazing people. They're incredible hockey players, and again, I think, you know, playing for this team, uh, you know, being able to, to be in Toronto for as long as I have, again, I just feel very fortunate for that. And um, it also, I mean, I guess a different word would be motivation. You mm. know, I think that, you know, when you see our potential or, you know, what we're capable of, it just, you know, makes you want to win a Stanley Cup and, uh, and to do it with your friends and do it in Toronto. And, um, you know, that's, I think that's what I think of when I see yeah. a picture like that. Look, that's the hope, the Stanley Cup. Yeah, for sure. We're on the road. And I believe last but not least, so when you're ready. Tessa, uh, love, um, admiration. Um, I mean, I, I, I really look up to her. So I, I feel very fortunate to, to have her in my life and be in hers. And um, we, we do our best to support one another. Not me about the crying and emotion about this. <laughs> no, because I love. My thing yeah. is, I'm a very emotional person, and yeah. I I love love. Yeah. So to hear another person reciprocate how they feel about whether it's a partner, whether it's family, whether it's literally anything. Yeah. Uh, especially you could you could sense the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not just oh they're just saying words, mm -hmm. and so you're filling up this 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 void with something. No, you you actually have that feeling, that visceral feeling. I'm like yeah. oh man, yeah, I really rock with that. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, I, I'm, I'm with you. I th you know, I think that's how, how I feel. And I think that's kind of, you know, not the inspiration behind, you know, what we're doing, but I think it's cool just to be honest and express how you feel and kind of be yourself, you know, accept who you are, accept, mm -hmm. you know, what you're thinking and feeling as, as being all right. And, um, I mean, whatever that is. And I mean, for me, I, I'm with you. I'm a pretty, I'm, you know, I can be emotional. And, um, I think when I was a bit younger, you almost kind of resent that about yourself. Mm -hmm. And then as you kind of uh, are mature, you, I mean, you start to accept those things and you start to like those things and, you know, value them. And that's certainly where I'm at now. Love it. Well, guess what? You define you. Exactly. Right? You define you and yeah. that's, that's it. Guys, uh, that's not all the time, but we're going to cut it there because I feel like that's a good note to end it on. Love. I love it. Perfect. Perfect. Morgan. Cool, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Love it. Thank you for everyone for watching. Uh, you can catch us everywhere, whether it's uh, IG, 
you'll see clips, uh, YouTube and or any streaming platform, really. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for that being here. Thank you all. Yay, Thank that's you. Morgan Riley, y'all. That's it. Thank you. Ah, okay. God, that scared the shit out of me, that pause. I was like, ah, I know what I want to say, but I feel like there's a lot of noise, which is dead silent in here. No. It's all the outside sources that was yeah. killing me. No, it's all good.